Hello and welcome guys, my name is Steve and today we're doing 5 Minute Friday where I share my software engineering experience with you. So because concurrency is a real world problem and we live in the world where things execute concurrently, today we're talking about concurrency in Go and specifically we're talking about 5 simple facts about Go routines in Go. So without too much talking, let's go ahead and throw in 5 minutes on the clock. So before we jump into facts and all that stuff, I just wanted you to know that application level threads or go routines are different from OS level threads. They are kind of the same, they kind of behave the same, but they are two different things in the end. Which leads me to fact number one, which is the lightness or how light a go routine is compared to an OS level thread. Now when it comes to how much memory the go routine stack size can have, it goes from 2 kilobytes up to how much it needs depending on how much memory it uses. As opposed to OS level threads which go from 512 kilobytes at least. Which is a lot compared to 2 kilobytes in case of the go routines. Now when it comes to how many go routines you can spawn or how many go routines you can run concurrently, that's a big number. It goes from hundreds of thousands or even millions, which I said is a big number. As opposed to OS level threads which goes from thousands or tens of thousands and that is not a big number due to the fact that it has one-to-one -one thread mapping, so most applications implement one-to-one -one thread mapping. So as I said before, most languages come up with a library which manages threads in the background. So basically, that is called one-to-one -one thread mapping. Now Go takes a different approach when it comes to thread management. So when it comes to concurrency in Go, Go has its own implementation called the Go Scheduler, which basically plays and manages threads in the background for you and gives you a thin abstract layer called Go Routines. So speaking of thread management, Go doesn't create Go routines out of thin air. It actually plays with the real physical threads in the background. And the way it does it, it creates maximum one physical thread per one CPU core which is like a golden ratio when it comes to thread management and keeping that sweet spot when it comes to speed slash space ratio. So another reason I love Go4 is the fact that it's fast, the fact that it's actually blazing fast. Go routines are different from OS level threads. I mean, it has a fast startup time, which means it doesn't use that much memory. It's very light which also means it's used internally, it's used on the runtime level, which means it doesn't interact with the OS level threads, which makes them so fast. Now the Go scheduler has this interesting approach called work stealing, which basically means it's gonna look for threads which have less work to do, which have less Go routines to process. And that is a very interesting way of delivering speed when it comes to concurrency. So as I said before, the Go routines are internally managed, they are managed by the runtime, they are managed by the Go scheduler, which means there is a faster communication between them, there is a faster communication between Go routines because they are used internally by the Go scheduler and basically there is no interaction on the OS level threads and that makes it so much faster. Also speaking of context switching, context switching is improved and optimized when it comes to the Go scheduler because again it's used internally, it's used on the threads which have already been created, it doesn't use context switching on the core level, it uses context switching on the thread level which means it's faster, which means it doesn't have to create another thread, it doesn't have to do extra work when it comes to the kernel when it comes to the low level stuff. So another thing we're talking about is simplicity and how simple it is to use Go routines as opposed to OS level threads. So as I said before, Go routines are managed and scheduled by the Go scheduler. So basically you have no access to thread management, things like thread ID or stuff like that because the Go scheduler does all that for you. It gives you just a thin layer which is called Go routines and basically you use Go routines. You don't care about thread management, you don't care about thread ID or anything like that. And there is a very beautiful and elegant way of communicating data between these Go routines, between these actions which are concurrent between these actions which are asynchronous. So basically this model is called CSP which means communicating sequential processes are also known as communicating data over channels. So here's a small example of Go routines which communicate between them over a channel. So basically they send data into the channel, they receive data from that channel. So basically that's how you communicate inside Go routines. That's how you communicate using a channel. And the biggest simplicity of them all is the way you use that concurrent function, is the way you use that concurrent action. You basically just type the keyword go in front of a function and that function runs concurrently. That function runs in a separate go routine. That is amazing and that is mind blowing and that's how deep the offers go when they mean simplicity. And finally, fact number five, the safety of go routines. So as I said before, as I stressed before, you're not doing any thread management. Basically the thread management is done behind the scenes for you by the Go scheduler. 
So it's safe to run Go routines because you're not doing any of that management. That management of threads is done automatically for you. If you would do that, you would probably make a lot of mistakes. You would probably have error prone code. And that is not what the Go team designed the language for. With just the right amount of threads, you can achieve way more than having a lot of threads. So at the end of the day, less is more when it comes to the Go scheduler, less is more when it comes to concurrency in Go. And also make sure to check out Arden Labs, which I'm gonna link in the video description. And make sure to check out his articles because he can explain it so much better than I do when it comes to concurrency, go routines, scheduling and all the things we talked about in this video. Alright guys, that was pretty much it on this video, that was pretty much it on this 5 minute Friday, so stay tuned and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace!